Well, welcome back. Here's where we left off. Most all the major parts are removed from the block. It's time to extract the cylinder or wet sleeve. McCormick Type M's were pretty unique in that the piston cylinder was contained in a sleeve which could be removed from the block for machining or maintenance if necessary. Here is a view from inside the block looking toward the top end of the cylinder sleeve. We're going to take this part out. To be clear, this is the first time I've done this. All I know is what I've learned from reading the McCormick Deering shop manual and watching Shop Dog Sam. I first machined a pulling tool out of a 5.5 by 1.5 60-61 round. eBay is your friend. The cylinder bore is 4 and 3 quarters inches and the outside diameter of the sleeve is about 5 and a quarter. I made the steps slightly undersized and bored a 5 8 inch hole in the center of the disc. I stuck a long piece of 5 8 inch all thread through the disc and double nutted the end. The other end comes out the top end of the engine through a plate made of 3 8 inch steel scrap, thanks Jake, and attached to the head as you can see. On the first attempt, the all thread was turning and not pulling. So I took the puller out and added lock washers and another nut on the inside of the pull disc. The nuts were heavily torqued down and the assembly reinstalled in the block. This time I tried my impact wrench. The rod wasn't turning anymore, but the impact tool didn't have enough torque. Sam warns you might need some help with really rusted sleeves, so I grabbed a piece of 2 inch steel pipe and a good sized hand sledge. Out she popped. I used the pipe with the combination wrench and finished the job. Success. All kinds of things in there. Here's the cylinder sleeve after removal. A lot of surface rust, but let's hope it's not deep. We're back to using electric sanders, brushes, and grinders, so protect your eyes and hands. I used my pipe sander to clean up the sleeve. It worked extremely well. There may have been a few spots where someone had tried to fill in a void or two, but having never done this before, I'm not sure.
a good going over with a wire wheel in the drill motor, took off more and got in the corners. A final pass or two with the 80 grit scotch bright pad finished the job. I masked off the ends and primed it with Rust-Oleum. The 104 degree days in the Texas sun baked the primer. Not bad, huh? The next task was to get 100 years worth of grease and crud out of the inside of the block. What fun. At least I was in the air conditioned shop Once again, having the big engine on the roller cart was great. The next process was even more messy. Another five gallons of solvent cleaned out the rest of the crud. Note the half inch pipe coming out of the back where the crankcase breather goes. This drains the dirty sludge into a bucket. The solvent alone will not fully clean all the dirt and accumulated grease off the block. I had to use the wire wheel and the drill motor. As the gunk came off, it was easy to see that a lot of paint had peeled off. Yes, in some areas the paint was okay, but over half the engine was just covered in surface rust and badly peeled paint. Many engine folks prefer the patina look, and I do too, but this engine was way too far gone, so the entire surface had to be smoothed down. With the power tools, it didn't take long, but the inside of the water hopper was heavily rusted. I sanded, scraped, and brushed for an hour or more, dislodging all the loose stuff.
I gave it a final blowdown with high pressure air. Here's what the inside of the bore looks like after cleaning. It took me over an hour to get the old O-ring out of that groove. The only part left to remove from the engine was the fuel tank and that is located inside the bottom of the block and the only way to access it was to lift the engine off the skid. Back came the engine lift and after carefully strapping the block, much lighter now, I lifted it off the skid. I carefully, very carefully, lowered the block to the floor with the head up. Removing the fuel tank was a snap, only two bolts. Here's the tank. It had been patched in several places, a lot of stuff rattling inside, resoldered, and no matter how much PB blaster I used, the three quarter inch nipple would just not come off. In the past, someone had even crushed the other end as well. Having gone to so much work, I decided to seek a new tank. When the next segment is published, you will hopefully see the results with an exciting new product coming from Flywheel Supply. Stay tuned. Please subscribe and comment if you'd like. But above all, thanks for watching. <laughs>